I am sitting here waiting for the vet to arrive. I've got a few concerns. I'll show you the video of what he's been doing. In three hours, this little guy will be three weeks old. Yep, it's midnight. And I just came out to do a couple things in the barn real quick before bed. And I couldn't help but just come and visit for a few minutes. He's very calm and quiet. And we'll just stand Resting a foot, just hanging out. He's very tired right now because he's snoring. <laughs> he's resting. I'm never out here this late and I've never seen this little guy snore standing up, but I have seen him snore while he's laying down, so it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Hello, little guy. Don't you? I'll pet you. I'll pet you. Catch you on me. Catch you on me. Catch you on me. Skipping ahead to evening, this was a big day for Manzer. This was the day that we put him and Nika out into their paddock for a few minutes just to get him familiar with it. And it's also when we introduced Manzer to Electric Fence. I'll put a link above to that video so you can go back and get the full story on everything that happened. Right after putting Manzer and Nika back in the stall, I gave Nika her grain, and Manzer's usually interested in it, and to see him just go stand in the corner really caught my attention. So I'm watching him very close, and he's shifting his weight back and forth a little bit on the hind end. Um, after watching him the night before and seeing him stand so quiet and kind of snoring while he's standing, you know, maybe he's just very tired. So I'm gonna keep an eye on him just to see if this behavior continues or if it changes. When I went back out the next morning and gave Nika her grain, the same thing happened. Manzer just went and stood in the corner and started doing sort of the same stuff. Now, the excessive licking and chewing and yawning gets my attention because that is an indication of pain. And also the shifting of the weight on the hind legs also is an indicator of discomfort. So. Um, now I'm, I'm definitely concerned and I put in a call to my local vet. It is Sunday, so that can be a bit of a challenge. Um, we may not have a large animal vet that is on call today, so that is a concern of mine. Seeing him paw puts up a big red flag. I am officially very concerned because this is not normal behavior for him and pawing is an indicator of pain or discomfort. Sometimes pawing will also, horses will paw if they're tied to a horse trailer or just separated from buddies. Um, they are anxious to get in and get their grain, that sort of stuff. Horses will paw, but this little guy has not developed any of those behaviors yet. So he is definitely not feeling like himself. So I went ahead and put in a call to the Wisconsin Equine Clinic while I was waiting for our local vet to get back to me. And I was able to connect with one of the vets who specializes in foals. One of the things that I would consider would be to haul him 
to the Wisconsin Equine Clinic because they have everything there that is needed to do all diagnostic testing. I was there over the winter with our pony Rosie when she was having some troubles. And if you haven't seen her journey, be sure to check it out in her playlist. I'll put a link above. But all of the testing, it was it was such an interesting um, adventure to go on with her and we learned so much. My concern with Manzer, if I were to load him up and haul him to the Wisconsin Equine Clinic, which is about between a five and six hour drive, that could potentially cause a lot more stress and pain. I was able to talk with the vet from Wisconsin Equine for quite some time and we went over a few different things that he could potentially be going through. Um, one of the main things that she thought that it could be was ulcers. So she said that ulcers are very common in foals and a lot of foals have them and people don't even realize it. So the big thing is getting our local vet over to the farm to look them over really well and have her see if she can find anything that could be going on um, and give her opinion as well and then help me make the decision do I haul him to Wisconsin equine or is he treatable at home. Shortly after I got off the phone with the vets from Wisconsin, I got a call back from our local vet and she was going to be heading over as soon as she was done with an emergency that had just come into the office. I was so thankful to hear back from her. It's just nice to know that there's help on the way. And for a long time, we went without having any large animal um, vets in our area. So that can be extremely stressful, especially in this kind of a situation. So I sat and watched for a while. And when Manzer stopped pawing, I put a halter on Nika and I took her out into the arena and wanted to see how he would do with you know moving around a little bit more. This little guy is three weeks and one day old today, and I am sitting here waiting for the vet to arrive. Fun fact, his umbilical cord just fell off. There, you can see the little stump. Just fell off. <laughs> oh, we got a kitty involved now too. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to video while the vet was here, not because the vet minded at all, but because I needed to have my hands on Manzer to keep him steady for his exam. But basically, Dr. Leah went ahead and checked him everywhere, and I expressed a few of my concerns. There were things like, you know, he had been experiencing his full heat diarrhea, um, and I hadn't actually seen him poop at all. So after that being said, she was worried about maybe having some sort of impaction. So she went ahead and did a rectal and checked and he did have normal poop. So that wasn't a concern at all. And then another thing um, that I had told her about before was my concern about him eating rocks. If you haven't seen that, check out previous videos. That has been, um, um, that has been a big concern of mine. The little bugger scoops up a mouthful of gravel every opportunity that he gets and it stresses me right out. Another thing is that he had had his little traumatic experience in the stall, so I told her about that as well. But she checked him over everywhere and gosh, he didn't seem like he had any um, area that he was in pain. You know, I was just trying to think of anything that I had seen that was not normal that happened to him or anything that could could be um, cause pain or whatever. So another thing was when he got shocked by the electric fence the day before. I've never seen a horse be injured from getting shocked by an electric fence, but I guess you just never know. So I wanted to make sure to tell her everything that I could think of that had gone on just in case that maybe she found something that could be related to it. His exam went really well and he passed it with flying colors. There was no dehydration, nothing to be concerned about. So, um, you know, her thoughts too were the same as the vet from Wisconsin Equine and thought, hey, let's treat him for ulcers and see if there's something going on in his tummy that is causing issues. So we went ahead and put him on ulcer guard. So it'll be for two weeks and he's gonna be getting um, three notches of it. So that's gonna be a 150 pound dose. He'll get that for two weeks and we'll, we'll 
uh, follow up and see how it goes. those eyelashes. He has the longest eyelashes I have ever seen. This giant tree can make this crack. <laughs> and then there's the kitty. He hasn't noticed the kitty yet. There he goes. Oh, don't draw. Manzer is loving all the attention. He's gonna eat her. Just don't let him chew on you. <laughs> She's actually had a hair bite, or ah! a horse bite her hair. They thought it, it looked so biteable. He's gonna bite your shirt. Yeah. He's gonna bite your shirt. He's gonna bite Nika. You know, sometimes you just have to use a foal's back as a place to color. <laughs> No big deal. Hey! His hair is like kitty. I thought that one the fat kitty. I want to hug Today is Tuesday, June 11th, and this little guy is one month old today. He's just hanging out here, taking a little snooze while his mama is over there having her dinner. He is just the sweetest little thing. He's very gentle and quiet. His color has really changed a lot. I don't know if he's gonna be a light sorrel or if he's gonna end up being Palomino. I think he looks a lot like his mom, so my guess is he's gonna turn out to be Palomino. And I think his right hind foot, I think he's gonna have a little white sock. Um, the other legs I think will be Will be the same color as him. It's really hard to tell, a little like this. But he's doing really good. Yeah. Yeah. He's really soft. When you get up, get up slow though so you don't scare him. Because you have a tendency to scare him because you get up too fast. Look at him look at you. He's like, hi. Oh, there he goes. He got up. He did he get up. He almost stepped on my foot again. Mm-hmm. 